Malang sa pagdinig ng House of Representatives ang formally official na si Crisel Grace Mago. Nagbago siya ng salaysay tungkol sa pagbabago umano ng manufacturing date ng mga biniling face shield ng gobyerno. Para sa detalye, mababalita ang aming correspondent na si AC Nichols. AC, anong sinabi ni Ms. Mago? Well, ito nga, Pinky, ano, binawi ni uh, formerly official Crisel Mago yung kanyang naunang statement na siya ay napag-utusang baguhin yung mga expiry date sa mga face shield na ide-deliver ng kumpanya sa Department of Health. Matatandaan ito yung kanyang naging testimonya sa pagdinig ng Senate Blue Ribbon Committee noong September 24. Pero ngayong umaga, sa pagdinig naman ng Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability ng House of Representatives, sinabi ni Mago na na-pressure lang daw siya sa Senado Aniya, pressured response daw ng, uh, kan ng kanyang kinumpirma yung testimonya ng isang witness na nag-deliver ang formally ng uh, damaged face shield o mga face shield na may maling expiration date. Dagdag ni Mago, yung nangyari lang ay uh, may mga nagkapalitan na mga production certificates pagkatapos mag ng face shield para siguruhin daw ng formally na walang may sira. Dinanay din niya na nagsupply ang formally ng substandard face shields at test kits sa gobyerno. At hindi nga napigilan ni Mago no, na maging emosyonal habang nagsasalita sa pagdinig ngayong umaga. Uh, matatandaan na ngayon lang ulit kasi siya makikita sa isang public proceeding matapos siyang maging inkomunikado noong nakaraang linggo. Sabi niya naging uh, traumatic or extremely traumatic daw para sa kanya ang mga pagdinig sa Senado at kinailangan niyang magpahinga dahil nagpositibo rin siya di umano sa COVID-19. Nilinaw rin niya na hindi siya na-coach dito sa kanyang testimonya ngayong umaga. Ito ay sa kabila ng uh, ilang pagbabatiko sa House hearing na sinasabing ginagamit ng mga kaalyado ni Pangulong Duterte para ipagtanggol ang pandemic spending ng administrasyon. Balik sa'yo, Pinky. AC, linawin lang natin ulit ha. Ano yung sinabi niya hinggil dun sa manufacturing dates? Ang sinasabi niya kasi, ang nangyari daw ay uh, kinailangan nilang mag-repack ng uh, mga face shield dahil nung sila ay nag-inspect, yung mga may damage, may mga dent or di kaya yung mga discolored, tinanggal nila. So ang nangyari, gusto nila per pack, sampu pa rin yung laman. So nag sila and then yung, pro yung uh, mga product certificates daw ay nagkaroon ng mix-up. Yun lang daw yung nangyari. Pero hindi daw siya, dininay niya na siya ay napag-utusan na sabihan yung mga staff nila sa warehouse na baguhin yung manufacturing or yung expiration date nitong mga face shield na ito. At nasabi lang daw niya yun dahil siya ay natatakot at na-pressure na sa um, mga pagtatanong sa kanya sa Senado. Pinky? Maraming salamat sa iyo, AC Nichols, nagbabalita. Mr. Chairman. In, in fact, I made a statement in the last hearing of the Congress, uh, House of Representatives and in the Senate, that I felt that the testimonies elicited to my person during the time were um, under pressure, and I feel that the environment in the Senate was hostile, uh, considering that the questions were very misleading and that... Um, being shouted and upon, first time in my life, being berated uh, as to my person, as to my profession as a lawyer, as to my education, as to my character. In fact, even the family name which was passed on to me by my ancestors, which I shall pass on to my children, has been berated, being called as Lao Lao. Uh, that's, that's very hostile, Mr. Witness. It's my first time, even as a lawyer, that I've been treated that way. So you share the sentiments of uh, Ms. Mago? Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, because before the Senate hearing started, I was even um, interviewed um, by a news agency, which I stated that the Senate and the House of Representatives hearing during the time, I was very interested in participating to shed light on the circumstances, but I never in any um, of my wildest dream would would it, would would foresee how I will be treated in uh, in such a hearing, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, D.S. Marcoleta, your time is up. Uh, why did you seek the protection under the House of Representatives? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as indicated in my letter, I want to speak freely without undue influence from varying sources.
Do you have anything to say to this committee? Mr. Chairman, I prepared an opening statement. May I be allowed to read it? Okay, 10 minutes. Please proceed. Good morning. I am Crizel Grace Mago, a former employee of Farmally Pharmaceutical Corporation. To begin, I extend my gratitude to the House of Representatives Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability for graciously allowing me time to make an opening statement and for having me under their protective custody. I am here to address a few points. First, I confirm that the official statement dated 28th of September 2021 was issued by me. I apologize for going off the radar for a few days. I simply needed time to breathe and to process everything that had just transpired. I also extend my gratitude to all those who expressed concern over my safety and well-being. I am here, I am alive, and I am safe. Thank you very much. Let me also share a few sentiments that I have harbored for quite some time. As a shy and socially awkward person, the past two months have been difficult for me which has been exacerbated by my involvement in the ongoing investigations where I was invited as one of the resource persons. While testifying before the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee last September 13, 2021, I was questioned about the, the specifics of Farmally's first contract with PSDBM. It was extremely traumatic for me. To be accused of lying and threatened with contempt. And true to their threat, they already arrested one of our executives. Personally, I was perplexed on how I could be perceived as a liar when I was simply answering questions directly based on the information that was reflected on our records. And I even willingly submitted the documents upon request. And after I relayed the sequence of events for that specific contract, one thing that stood out the most was the reaction to the advance delivery, which included disparaging remarks like parang grab lang. I do recognize that each and every one of us are entitled to our own interpretation and reaction to every revelation made during the hearings. And while I personally agree that delivery made before issuance of a purchase order was unusual, we should not overlook the fact that this took place during an unprecedented time. I personally struggled to purchase face masks at that same time for personal use. And I am certain that majority of the Filipino people also relate to this experience, most especially our frontliners. Furthermore, and on a more personal note, I tested positive for COVID-19 during the course of the hearings, which resulted in a decline in my physical and emotional health. Additionally, the overwhelming pressure and the intense scrutiny of the investigations have had a detrimental effect to my mental health. Over and above this, my personal mobile number and even my current place of address were also revealed publicly. This violated my right to privacy as a private citizen and also resulted in unwanted harassment and even disturbing messages and calls. 
moving on and on a second point i deny all allegations made by the un unidentified witness who appeared in a video presented by Senator Risa Antiveros on September 24, 2021. And please allow me to expound on that. Formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation, or PPC, has never delivered damaged items to the government, neither does it intend to. PPC conducts its routine quality inspections on the inventory prior to making deliveries. And it is in the conduct of these quality inspections that we were able to identify damaged face shields, um, which includes, but not limited to, dented, folded, torn or broken, and discolored face shields. Now, these damaged face shields were immediately segregated, subject to proper disposal, and therefore, they were excluded for delivery. And moreover, when we received the inventory, it was already inconsistently packed to begin with, meaning that there were face shields packed individually, and then there are also those in groups. And uh, to make matters worse, we there was a significant number of um, packed face shields that we opened solely uh, for the purpose of removing the damaged items. And as a result, we ended up with an inventory so inconsistently packed, ranging from about six to 10 face shields per pack, in addition to the face shields that were individually packed. So I raised this concern to our management in a meeting sometime in August 2021. And it has been decided to repack the stocks uniformly in groups of 10 face shields per packaging. This is for an easier and more efficient um, inventory management and accounting. And this is the same instruction that I gave to the warehouse personnel. And in the course of the repacking, um, the face shields, uh, the packaging, which had broken quantities were merged together to form 10 pieces per packaging. And in the conduct of the repacking, um, the product certificates got mixed up and some were subsequently discarded because the staff only needed to put one, uh, one product certificate per packaging. So um, to further clarify, the face shields required by the Department of Health for this specific contract are non-medical grade face shields. And... Uh, this is also stated in the technical specification. Third, third point, regarding my previous testimonies on the questions pertaining to swindling the government, I do admit that it was a pressured response. Given the amount of pressure that I was under at that time, and even the rush of emotions, associated with the allegations made and my subsequent admission, I was not in the proper um, frame of mind to think clearly. At that time, to be honest, what I considered was the fact that we already delivered a portion of these face shields containing the mixed um, product certificates to the, the Department of Health. But after the Senate hearing, and after I evaluated my answers or my testimonies, I realized that the, the face shields that we partially delivered to the, the Department of Health have not been inspected. Hindi pa po siya na inspect and na accept ng Department of Health. So hindi, rin, hindi pa rin po siya na allocate and distribute sa mga end users. And in addition, wala pong natanggap na bayad ang formally from the Department of Health for this um, partial delivery. So I hope that this clarifies the situation. Finally, in light of the information presented, I thank you for your time and interest and I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 
Before the interpolation, I'd like to ask to Chriselle, is there anybody who from any any party who talked to you to to draft that statement to say something or to assist you in your statement? None, Mr. Chairman. I made this opening remarks on my own book. Opening statement. Okay. On September 24, 2021, you mentioned on record in a Senate he hearing led by Senator Gordon that formal, formerly pharmaceutical corporation tampered with the manufacturing date of face shields and deemed these procured goods as substandard and expired. Can you please affirm the truthfulness of this statement that you made? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the face shields were not expired and substandard. And I've mentioned in my opening statement that the damaged face shields were immediately segregated for proper disposal. For. And um, there was a mix up of the product certificates for when we uh, when we repacked the face shields. That's um, kasi isa lang po yung product certificate na nilalagay sa packaging containing 10 face shields. So there were um, times na yung mga ibang um, product certificates were discarded kasi sobra po. So ibig sabihin, iba-ibang source ng mga face shields niripak nyo sa isang ano, set, ganun ba? Ang nangyari po, Mr. Chairman, is that may mga binuksan kaming mga sets ng oh. face shields para i-remove po yung mga damaged items. And ang nangyari is that mag merong mga iba-ibang quantity per sets and hindi siya uniform. So when we decided to repack, doon po namin minerge yung mga uh, packing, packaging na may broken quantity po. So... Ms. Mago, did Mr. Moit Dargani instruct you to, to change the dates of the date of manufacture? There was never an instruction to change the date of manufacture, uh, the production date, Mr. Chairman. But there was an instruction to proceed with the repacking. Okay. Aside from face shields, are there any other goods that were sold to the government that were substandard, expired, or tampered? None, Mr. Chairman. Uh, also, I'd like to clarify on the on the for on this statement: uh, formally, test kits expiring in six months were accepted by the DOH and DBM. Even if the per the even if their purchase order requires twenty four to thirty six months expiry, can you comment on that? What's your answer, uh, Mr. Chairman? As um, explained by DOH Secretary Duque before, the expi uh, the shelf life for novel test kits such as the test kits for COVID nineteen has a limited shelf life, palang po. So that is six months. And I believe it was also... Recorded. Sino nang sabi na 24 to 36 months kailangan sa purchase order? Nakasulat daw sa purchase order? It was in the technical specifications po, Mr. Chairman, but I believe we offered six months po based on the actual um, product brochure and product instruction for you. So the, the DOH was, was uh, no, informed that you will be delivering six months uh, life of test kits. They were aware of it. From what I can recall, Mr. Chairman, they are aware of it. 